we get the red shorts. Um, what happened? Did you lose a straw draw? Did they run out of red shorts? I was, I was disappointed for you. Oh, uh, they asked me what shorts I wanted, and I thought I thought the white looked pretty good, but you obviously have a different opinion. But I, uh, I called the, it the, <laughs> Yeah, I well, I got I got choice of white, black, or red. I didn't know they'd be gray, but. I think so. I think they look pretty good. I, I call you two shades of gray. Not quite two shades, we get two. I'll take That's more than one, so I'll take it. Brad, how'd you feel out there competing in Bantam in your natural weight class? Oh, I felt good. Um, I felt quick, and uh, it, it, it's nice seeing the Bantam weight speed. Uh, being a featherweight, uh, being a featherweight in the Ultimate Fighter, you know, I, I thought I'd be the quicker guy, but out there in Bantam weight, I, I still felt, you know, I had that speed advantage, and that's a nice advantage to have. So, uh, you know, it, is, it, it feels great. Uh, I think I kept all the strength, all the power I had at featherweight. So, uh, I'm, I'm excited to keep on going at bantamweight. Anything surprised you about Matt in the cage today? You know what? No, I, I, I knew he was going to be gritty. I knew he was going to hit hard. Um, you know, it's just one of those where when I'm zoned in, uh, time kind of slows down a bit, and, and uh, you know, so. Every fight I'm going, oh, they feel, felt, felt a little bit slow, but I think it's just being in, in that raid zone that we train uh, every day in the gym for. So, um, yeah, nothing really surprised me. I knew he was going to be gritty. I knew he was going to have good wrestling. And uh, I knew he was going to have power in his hands. So nothing really surprised me out there. You mentioned this week that uh, his wrestling may cause some problems. Uh, was it important for you to get that takedown in the fight? Were you, was this something you were hoping to be able to do? You know what, I, I, I just plan on mixing it up and uh, keep, keep them guessing out there. There wasn't a very good opportunity for, for a takedown in the fight. Uh, so, so when I got his leg in the third round, I thought, okay, you know, this is a position he's been in <laughs> since he's been five years old. You know, he, he knows how to defend this, and I felt the hip pressure. But I just held it and started throwing shots. At that point, it was, okay, let's score some points, and let's just, uh, you know, let's look for an opportunity. And uh, later on in the fight, when he shot in on me, I felt just, as, just at home. Uh, as, as, as he is there, so um, you know what, I, I, if I can get the takedown, great, but I'm, I never count on it. Can you talk about that submission at the end of the fight? I mean, that was pretty slick. Is that something that you, that you work on, or was it, I mean, that, that was pretty sweet. You know, it's something I've caught in the gym many a times. You know, you sink on that uh, rear naked grip, and it doesn't matter what position you're in. You know, the guy's choking, and, and you have a lot, of, a lot of torque in your body. Um, I, I didn't know how, how much it was on or, or what the situation was. All, all I could hear was everyone screaming. and uh, So I thought, okay, let's just squeeze the heck out of this choke. And uh, you know what? All of a sudden, his body went kind of limp. And uh, then the bell rang. And well, I got the decision one. When the referee stepped in, did you think the fight was over due to the submission? Or did you hear the bell and know it was the end of the fight? You know, I knew, it was, I knew it was the end of the fight, but he couldn't answer this, the final bell. You know, the ref had to help him up multiple times, and even then he picked him up once, and he was stumbling, and then he picked him up again, and he was stumbling, and finally they got him to a stool. To me, that's every sign of uh, him not answering that final bell. If, if that would have been a big right hand, you know, that would have been it uh, most of the time. So I think it should have been a stoppage win, but, you know, like I got the decision win, I got to, you know, show I'm, I'm looking for that finish up until uh, the end of the fight. Well, as I say, it worked out, right? So you got the win, what does it matter? But, I mean, as you're sitting there waiting for the scores to be read, is there any thought in your mind, like, what if this doesn't go my way? I mean, I just choked a guy unconscious, and I might be handed an L. Yeah, you know what? Uh, I, I was confident I was going to get the win, but even then, there's that little bit of uh, uncertainty, and, and, and you never want that. You know, you want to put, you know, the final stamp on. And I thought, you know, if that third round was, was competitive, that, that last... Uh, kind of 30 seconds should have sealed it. So I was confident I had the two rounds in, potentially three. And uh, you, know, you know what? I'm very happy that the, the judges gave me the call. Are you going to uh, contest that? You know, with the commission, just to say, hey, you know, have another look at this. I don't know what all the all the fighting and you know throwing your hands up in the air for. I I I I got the win out of it, uh, and, and I got to prove that I, I'm looking to finish. You know, so that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to go in there and make a statement, and and I think it was a it was a very tough opponent I just took out in there. So. Uh, you know what, I, I, I'm pretty pretty happy with myself, and uh, you know what, now we just keep on going back and keep on improving. Brad, Can we talk about, oh, Brad, I don't know if it's too early to like, start naming opponents, but have you looked ahead to the upcoming schedule? You know, you got to play in Canada, which is great. You got you fought in Las Vegas, also amazing. So, uh, any destination in mind next? California, New York, somewhere overseas? You, you know what, uh, 
I, I haven't really had a good chance to look at 2019 yet. Uh, ever since September, I've been preparing for this fight, and it kind of sounds like the stereotypical Canadian answer of, oh, I'm not calling anybody out. Uh, I just haven't actually set my game plan for, for, for what exactly, we, we, who we want next, you know. Um, I don't want to be, I didn't want to look past, past uh, Matthew Lopez. He's a very tough opponent. And uh, so it wasn't, you know, when I took the fight, it wasn't, okay, well, after Matt, where do we go from here? You know, it was all depending on my performance and what I deserve after this, so. Uh, how did this first UFC win at 135 compare to winning the fighter? Uh, that's a very tough call, you know. Winning winning in front of the my, my Canadian, uh, my fellow Canadians, and uh, 20,000 people, a sold out event. You know, that's, that's a pretty amazing feeling, but then, uh, win the Ultimate Fighter Trophy. Both of them felt great. You know, saying one's better than the other is tough, but uh, you, you know, it is, it's definitely something I'm going to remember for the rest of my life. You've been really active this year with Tough, and now you're officially 2-0 in the UFC. Do you want to take a bit of time off or get back in there as soon as you can? You know, in, in all honesty, as, as soon as my body healed up, I want to be uh, back training. So um, it's not really like the time off. It's time off, throw, throw the feet up and, and just relax. Back to the gym improving. Uh, really, once I get back to, you know, back to Dublin, start training again uh, with all my fellow teammates at SBG, then we can start making a game plan together on, on who we want next at Bantamweight. And, you know, the holidays are going to roll over pretty quick. So uh, I think we got the time. Will you still bully SBG or are you going to come back on that? Oh, Am I oh, <laughs> uh, you, you know what? I, they asked me my New Year's resolution, and I should have thought about that. Maybe I should have eased off at the bullying, but uh, you know what? I guess I'm a bully. You know, I'm the, I'm the guy with glasses, the, the dorkiest one in the gym. But yes, I'm the bully. Is that the new nickname then? Or are you gonna go with the bully? <laughs> I think that one's taken, but uh, I'll stick with Superman. You call yourself the dorkiest fighter in the UFC. Have you seen the Avengers trailer yet? Oh, I have seen the Avengers trailer. I actually, y y you know, it's tough to say I'm the dorkiest because there is some like hardcore, uh, like anime fans and really uh I, I i don't know if i'm the dorkiest but like i'm in i'm in the clique at least there's, there's a group of us who uh who who, who who uh i don't know big dogs whatever you want to call us you know the glass pushers uh but yes i have seen the new avengers trailer and my man that looks good um i was watching with my girlfriend the other day and we, we were both like sending shivers down your back i'm so excited can you rank the top five dorkiest fighters <laughs> so, <laughs> you know what? I, I I don't I don't want it to be a contest, but I. Uh uh, the style bender, he's big into, uh, I know he's too big into the anime, Roxanne Modafferi. Uh, you know, the, to me those would be the top two. I, I, I don't know, I haven't really been picking out, but like, they're like hardcore into the anime, so that, that's pretty cool. Like, I, I never followed it too much, but like, I, I was in a chess club, so you know, I took a different side of the darkness. I was like, liking your anime. Uh, heard cool comics and then there's like playing chess and I guess doing sciencey stuff so I'm in that group. Uh,